Action, japanisches Filmfestival, Frankfurt am Main. Hello and welcome to our presentation Aesthetic in Video Games from Fumoto Ueda. My name is Anne and I will be your host today. Me and my co-host Kenzo are team member of the Nippon Culture team and we are looking forward to your eager participation. Before we start, please note this, that this presentation will be recorded. If you have any questions, please leave them in our F&A. Now I welcome our guest and speaker Ms. Matthias from Kurspiel Museum Berlin. Matthias, please take it away. Thank you, Anne, and thank you to the whole team of Nippon Connection. Uh, and welcome, dear visitors and participants and audience. Uh, welcome to the aesthetics and the design of the games of Fumito Ueda. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most unique uh, video game designers of today. Um, as Anne said, I am Matthias Oborski, the exhibition director of the Computerspiele Museum, the computer games museum in Berlin. Thank you for being here. So before we begin, a few reminders. I'm going to show you some pre-recorded video clips um, from the original games. And please bear in mind that some of those clips were taken from the old PlayStation 2 versions that means low resolution, pixelated look, washed out textures, right? So it's not only the fault of Zoom or the crappy German internet, it's um, just the way it was back then. So if you haven't played these games and you still want to, um, hopefully after this lecture, um, there will be small spoilers, but I won't focus on the uh, story or the puzzles and I don't give away the endings, I think. Um, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A here in Zoom. I um, plan to make a small pause in the middle and take a quick look at them. And then again, of course, at the end. Okay, the three games we are talking about today are Eco from 2001, Shadow of the Colossus, from 2006 and The Last Guardian 2016. I don't have that in physical form anymore. Um, before we jump into the aesthetics, let me give you a short summary and a synopsis of these games um, in case you've never heard of them or you've never played them, just to give you some kind of reference, right? Okay. In all three games, you play a young boy um, in Shadow of the Colossus, it's more like a young adolescent, a young man. All three games take place in a fantasy setting um, that could be the same world because the architecture, the clothes, and the environment looks kind of similar between the three games. Um, in all three games, there's very little dialogue, and that is in a fictional language as well. Eco right here. Um, Eco is the name of the young protagonist in the game Eco. Um, he's a boy born with horns on his head who's taken to an abandoned castle by a group of men and they lock him in a stone coffin as a sacrifice and to protect their village they say. Uh, presumably his horns are considered a curse and after a small earthquake he can escape the coffin and in this huge, gigantic, abandoned castle, he finds a girl named Yorda. She doesn't speak his language and she's not really human. She's somewhat ghost-like and together they have to escape the castle. So that's more or less the story of Eco. In Shadow, we play a young man called Wanda who travels by horse to the so-called forbidden land as a mysterious narrator explains to us. And Wanda carries the corpse of a girl with him called Mono. And he wants to resurrect her body. Apparently, there's some kind of supernatural being or god or demon in this forbidden land who can revive the dead. Um, this being is called Dormin. And 
Dormin agrees to revive the girl, but only after Wanda has destroyed and slain 16 gigantic colossi. Um, is, is the plural of colossus colossi or colossi? I, I stick with colossi, okay. The Last Guardian combines elements from Eco and Shadow. Again, there's a young boy in a gigantic ruined castle who doesn't really know where he is. And um, there's a massive creature like in Shadow, but this time this creature is on our side. Well, sort of. Um, at the beginning, this creature called Trico is quite hostile because it has been treated very badly. Um, part of the game is to get Trico to trust you and to help and, um, and so that he can help you remove obstacles and stuff and fight enemies or fly you to hard to reach platforms. So uh, those are the three games we're talking about. In all three games, one of the key gameplay elements is the relationship between the protagonist and um, the uh, individual, uh, the another individual, uh, Yorda and Eco, the horse Agro and the Colossi in Shadow of the Colossus, and Trico and the Last Guardian. It is not possible to progress in the games without interacting with these individuals. You have to interact with them. So I won't go into the details of what you actually have to do while playing the games, um, except like right now. Just very quickly, please bear with me. This is a PlayStation 4 controller and it's important for the atmosphere. Um, as you might know, there are little um, motors inside that can vibrate and rumble, of course, um, and all games take advantage of this, but it's special in the games of Ueda-san because you can feel your counterpart moving through it, resisting, fighting back, moving and stuff like that. So it's not just like driving a car or an explosion like in other games, it's a living being at the other end, a simulated living being. Okay. And uh, you can't see that in the video clip, so that's why I'm telling you this. Um, another thing that's important in, well, it depends on your game version and then how you set up the controls, but in the original in the classical original, you have to hold one of these buttons all the time if you want to hold the hand of Yorda, for example, and if you want to cling to the fur of the Colossi. And um, this thing rumbles as hell if you climb on the Colossi. And um, it's really physically demanding after a time. So that helps building a real connection and be emphatic with your protagonist on the screen. Um, so that's quite interesting as well. Okay, let's watch some parts of the intro of Shadow of the Colossus, because for me, that's the most iconic intro of the three games. And um, please apologize my crappy editing skills. That's by far not my expertise. And I hope this works right now. Okay, just a moment.
So that was the longest video clip for this lecture. The other ones will be shorter. Um, you see the classical um, trademarks of Weda, if you like. Um, just a minute, I have to put this back. Um, you saw in this uh, clip um, gigantic old architecture. Um, that's a common theme. An overexposed, desaturated light. Um, creatures that have a human shape but aren't really human. And those exact same shadows appear in Eco too. And um, those things um, bind those three games together. Another good example um, to really capture the aesthetical essence um, from those three games comes from The Last Guardian. Um, the very first time the creature Trico and the boy get out of those gigantic ruins and finally see the real sunlight again. I'll show you that clip too. Matthias, 
when you start a video, could you please mute your microphone? We yeah. hear you. Yeah, I Thank do you. that. Aratizi, o te tāra lastuzi, ala kastakaru, inokia, ata du roku tuzi, ia no mōtu kia tu ne ao kūsi. Nezo, ia ne li ia te rakiri, agi ukui? Ao nā li, ao tutu, ke o no nita, ago kūzi, adu tu kū no o tazi. So, that was a portion of The Last Guardian. And as you can see, um, they have a similar look, although they're more than 10 years um, apart from another. Um, it's really hard to convey with these little non-interactive video clips um, the sense you get while playing those games. And that won't come across this lecture um, either. Um, and this is the sense of profound, um, maybe not loneliness, but an aloneness and a solitude you get while playing those games, a sense of emptiness. Um, sure, you have one single companion with you, Yorda or Trico or your horse, Agro, but that's it. Um, in order to experience this solitude, you really have to play the game um, or you can watch a long play video on YouTube. They only last eight hours, so it's a weekend now. You can do that. Um, so something is missing in these worlds. You can really feel that. The inhabitants or builders of those gigantic ruins are missing, furniture is missing. Somebody to actually talk to in your own language is missing. And even the full color spectrum is missing. But this is also a metaphor for, um, you know, something is missing inside the protagonists, the knowledge of where they are, who they are, and what they are dealing with. In, um, in Shadow, for the, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, for example, the protagonist does know where he is and he thinks he does know what, he, what he's doing but he really doesn't know anything about this forbidden land and about the demon or God. And he doesn't know anything about the Colossi. In Eco and the Last Guardian, the protagonists don't know anything about their environments. They're just, you know, um, thrown into a castle without really knowing what's going on. So let's introduce the Japanese concept of Ma. Um, please forgive me for compressing such a complex concept in just a few words. I'm going to show you Ma, uh, just a second. Uh, where is my screen? Sorry, takes a moment to actually find this on my computer. Okay. So this is Ma, I hope you can see it. And um, Ma literally means gap or space or pause. It can refer to an interpretation of an empty space, 
that's equally important as the actual object of an art piece, for example. So sometimes ma is used to refer to literal empty space where there's nothing. And sometimes it can refer to a perceived emptiness. Um, so this is a cup, right? With Yuri Gagarin. And um, it's a physical object. Um, but the very idea of the cup, um, the whole purpose of the cup is the emptiness inside the cup. Without this emptiness, a cup wouldn't really be a cup. Um, so that's ma. And the emptiness between two notes while playing music is ma too. And one of the earliest examples of ma in classical Japanese painting is this one. Um, I have to fiddle with the controls again. Right, um, this painting right here. It's from the late 16th century. And um, as you can see, you can't see much, at least with European eyes, right? Um, you see some pine trees. And um, other than that, uh, there's quite something some bits of empty space just around the pine trees and um, this emptiness actually enhances the effect the pine trees have on the viewers and i think that absence of objects is essential in the aesthetics of Uedasan, um, not only in the world building but also in the technical aspects of game design for example you don't really have an interface that displays information you don't have an inventory like in so many other games. And some articles call this design by sub subtraction. Take everything away that is not vital, right? Um, so let's look some time. Let's take us some time to look for Ma in the next clip from Shadow of the Colossus. Just a little bit of context here. If you have slain one of those colossi, you fall in some sort of coma and you wake up in the temple next to the dead body of Mono. And then you have to get to the next colossus. But that can take quite some time riding through an almost empty landscape. So let's look for Ma in this video clip.
no, just as it was getting so exciting. Um, so the Colossi here are the pine trees, right? Um, because everything else is quite empty. Okay, so now I can take a little pause and I can look into the Q and A. Um, okay, that's a complicated question. What do I think of the remakes uh, for the PlayStation 4 from an aesthetic perspective? Mm, I don't like them, to be honest. Um, technically, they are perfect, but artistically, they um, basically, there's nothing in it um, of all the things that I'm talking about right now. Um, they, um, the, the picture is much too, much too clear. It looks like a mainstream PlayStation 4 video game for me right now. And, um, and um, I prefer the originals, although they're really a pain to record and to play now because they're old and, and um, the hardware is old. But um, aesthetically, I definitely prefer the old original ones because the new ones look like uh, look too much like other games. So um, next question is, um, did we ever, ever ever said that there's a connection between all those three games? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, maybe, but then again, I am uh, just interpreting. And they definitely look, uh, have the same look. And um, in, oh no, that's a spoiler. I, won't, I wanted to go into details about the ending of Shadow of the Colossus because the ending of Shadow of the Colossus hints that there may be a connection to Eco, right? Uh, but I, I, um, if you ever want to play this, um, I leave it up to you. Um, yeah, that's a good question. The next question is, isn't it depressive that in a world where there are so little living beings, you are there to kill more living beings? Yes, that's depressing. And that's exactly one of the points of the game, I think. Um, and it gets really relevant at the end of the game because while playing it, you sometimes think that's, that's probably not right what I'm doing here, is it? And in the end, you will see that um, not everything is as it seems. So yeah, it's, it's kind of depressing, but you have to do it. And that's the, the beauty of video games. Um, you can be more emphatic with the story somehow because you're actively involved. So um, yeah, um, feel free to um, post questions. I'm going back to the lecture right now because um, there's another influence we have to look at. First of all, I have to look at my notes. So the concept of Ma is of course a complex one and uh, we're believing that behind a little bit uh, because the next point is not really Ma but really interesting in terms of the very economical use of design elements in the games of Ueda-san. As you saw in the clips, light and shadow are really important elements in the graphical style of the games, um, but they serve as gameplay elements too. They don't just function as decoration. And I think that's really brilliant, a brilliant reuse of elements. Um, take a key element of the graphics and turn it into a key gameplay element. Um, your enemies in ECO are literally shadows. You fight against shadows, against the absence of light, a negative space, if you will. Um, in Shadow of the Colossus, you even have shadow in the title, for one thing, and you use light reflections on your sword to locate the next Colossus. In The Last Guardian, something similar happens. 
you can shine light on a target and then Trico, the creature, will attack the target with some sort of magic lightning. So let's watch Eco defeat Shadows and the two other guys using light to advance their journey. Okay, where is that? So light becomes a gameplay element and shadow too. And that's how to be economical with your design. So I, I've hinted that there are other influences, of course, uh, not only Japanese influences in Ueda's game. One definite influence on the graphics design is Italian painter Giorgio Di Chirico. It may not obviously, um, it may not be immediately obvious in the actual games, but definitely on the cover of Eco. And um, I'll show you why. A moment. So, just no, that was the wrong thing. I only work with computers for a living, so I don't know anything about computers. That's it. But somehow it doesn't work. So I'll get back to you in a second. The cover of Eco. Um, is almost exactly like a painting of um, Giorgio de Corico. And now I have the right thing here. I hope. I don't know if you can see this. Right. So on the left, you have the cover of Eco. And on the right, you have uh, Giorgio de Corico. And I guess you can all see the um, similarities. Um, let's look at some other paintings of De Corico. You can see there are very long shadows and uh, some kind of surreal atmosphere. And there you have it. The bridge in Shadow of the Colossus looks like um, one of the arcades in one of the paintings of Di Corico. So 
it may not be immediately obvious, obvious, but um, that's one of the influences, I think. Um, Giorgio di Corico was one of the main artists of the Pittura Metaphysica, metaphysical painting at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, aspects of metaphysical paintings are somewhat disquieting images um, of deserted squares um, with only tiny figures, if any. So usually town squares are full of life, but not in those paintings. And the paintings are often bordered by steeply receding arcades with harsh shadow, shadows. And um, Wikipedia says, the effect was to produce a sense of dislocation in time and space. And that's exactly what you get in the games of Ueda-san, a sense of dislocation in time and space. The ruins look like they've been there forever, although clearly designed by someone some time. But the specific time is really unknown. And the place where those ruins are, are um, you know, they're almost as foreign to the protagonist as to us. They don't really know what's going on there. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely um, another influence. The last point of this lecture is the design of the gigantic creatures. Um, there aren't any gigantic creatures in Eco, so let's focus on Shadow of the Colossus and the Last Guardian. Um, if you play these games, you will see this immediately. The protagonists, the, the boy and the young man, are designed not to have a fully featured human face. They look like, um, well, not cartoonish, but they look simplified. But the Colossi and Trico are intricately designed. So um, there are really, really many details on their bodies, the fur, the feathers. Um, so the only real humans in the games are not designed to look photorealistically. The giants, however, look totally realistically. Well, you know what I mean. They're not realistically, but they look realistically. The fur of the Colossi and the feathers, you know, and apparently the effect of wind on the feathers was modeled separately for each single feather. And um, let's take a quick look how beautifully this looks in the game. You are still muted. It's muted. <laughs> I was still muted. So sorry. Um, but uh, you saw it for yourself. Um, the feathers move beautifully. And um, this is um, a really interesting design choice that your protagonists, the humans, um, are not 
as intricately, inter intricately designed um, as the monsters. And um, another thing about the Colossi, um, Trico is of course completely organic and looks like a, I don't know, a mixture between a dog and a bird and a dragon, but he is a real animal. You can feel that. But the Colossi wear some kind of armor and some body parts look like, uh, more like parts of a building than of an animal. And again, that makes sense gameplay wise. While Trico is your companion through the different parts of the world, uh, very much like Yorda, um, who is a companion in this strange world, the Colossi, um, they are like levels in the game. You know, like in a typical platform game like Super Mario, where you have different levels um, of rising difficulty, usually um, and they have a, all have a specific look and feel. Um, and often in those games, you have to learn the levels by heart in order to get to the end. And you die a lot while, you know, playing it. And the Colossi are designed that way too. They are levels like in a platform game, like, um, and they feature uh, platforms, really actual platforms. And um, they feature special areas where you can rest. And um, they have usually one best way to beat them. And um, I can show you this uh, with the very first Colossus in the game. Um, it really looks like a platform level, right?
and that's it. Colossus is dead, lecture is over. Um, so you could say that Shadow of the Colossus features 16 levels in the form of Colossi, all connected to the concept of Ma with a dash of Italian Pittura Metaphysica. And that was just a very, very tiny glimpse into the aesthetics and in the design of Fumito Eda. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. And um, now it's time for your questions. If I find them. Okay, Andy asks, how do you like the Souls games? Dark Souls, I suppose, from an aesthetic perspective. Yeah, is it possible to have a lecture about them next year? Maybe, uh, I know the person right for it because uh, I'm not a Dark Souls person. I do love the aesthetics, they are great. But in order to advance the story, you have to die so many times that I gave up, I have to admit it. I'm not a pro gamer, I, uh, I do that. <laughs> uh, I just want to relax sometimes and Dark Souls, the Dark Souls games are so very hard, but um, I do like the aesthetics very much. Um, I think um, the most astounding games we have today, at least in, the, you know, in this, um, big triple a world um so yeah dark souls um i will ask the person i know uh but for me um, i'm probably not the right guy for that so christian asks can you tell us something about the music and background sounds inspiration um i cannot because i just focus on the graphics design um, what I can tell you is that the music is used very, very, very rarely, almost only then if there's a fight going on or, or there's a key point in the story. Um, other than that, there's just the, you know, ambient sound of the environment. Um, you have um, in the ruins, you have, you know, um, torches crackling. Uh, and in the nature, you have um, sounds of nature, not so many animals because it's a very empty world, but um, there are some birds flying around. Um, but I don't have enough background information to really um, say a lot about the, the production of the music and the production of the background noises. So I'm sorry. Swen asks, um, do I think if the black liquid in the Colossi is identical with the shadows in Eco? So shadow equals life. Um, interesting question, really interesting. I mean, the, the, the black liquid, the black fluid and shadow of the Colossus is well, if you advance the story, in the end, it becomes clear that it's, I think, somewhat demonic. And um, it's not really life. Um, and the shadows in Eco are kind of demons. Um, interesting. Um, you could make a connection because as, as I remember at the very end of Shadow of the Colossus, um, those human shadow, shadowy figures appear again and um, they take over your protagonist more or less. Um, so maybe the shadows are not life, but the opposite of life, but not really dead, uh, not really death. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think the black liquid and the uh, shadows in Equa are closely connected because in, in the in shadow, it's, it's clearly some kind of, some manifestation of the demon in this forbidden land. 
and in eco they're more of a manifestation of the of the queen that resides in the castle so it looks the same but i don't think they're connected um is there a cor correlation between the names eco and chirlico or is that just a coincidence i don't know i can't answer you that question Karim asks, are there any other games you know that are directly influenced by Weda's games? Um, well, one comes to mind. It's an indie game. It's called um, The Brothers, The Tale of Two Brothers. Um, I can't remember the exact name. It doesn't look as Weda's games but it has the same sense of um, you know, um, companionship within a very empty world. Um, so that's one game I can think of. There may be others, um, but right now from the top of my head, I can't really name any of them. Um, so yeah. Last question here is, um, is Hueda mainly working on these games since there aren't so many releases or is he involved in other games too? Again, I can't definitely answer that question. I really think he is not involved in so many other games. Um, I presume you, you mean uh, in the background, um, like um, an artist director or something, not at the top level uh, guy. Um, I don't think he is really. And I don't know what he's doing all the time. Uh, maybe he just enjoys life and puts some kind of misery in the games so that he doesn't have this in his life. Um, I don't know. Um, but I don't think he's involved in many more games. So that was the last question in the Q&A. And um, so it seems. <laughs> if I yeah, look at the watch, um, it's quite late yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for me yeah thank you thanks a lot um it was really interesting i didn't know so much about this cool universe of humodoida it's really something and thanks a lot um i hope to see you again next year maybe i we hope so see. too maybe with dark souls <laughs> yeah but and thanks <laughs> to all the people who looked um to and um turned into questions it was really a pleasure and yeah Thanks, and see you next year. Thank you again, and thank you, visitors. Bye-bye. Um,